Hello everyone, this is Raden Wijaya. Today I'm going to discuss about shortest path problem. First, we need to understand what is shortest path problem. Actually, it's not a problem at all. It's just a quiz, I think, or a quest on how you find a shortest path between two points. For example, if you are in a city from your home going to your office, okay, you need to find the most efficient road from home to office. Maybe you can just drive straight as usual but maybe you can take a shortcut by turning to a little small street and then going to that boulevard and then going to that avenue and then you'll reach your office that's the shortest path the path between your normal route and your alternate route is of course not the same and shortest path problem is looking for a way to find the most efficient or the shortest path on this video, I will call the node or I mean like intersection or it's called vertex and the road or the distance is called H. This problem has been around for like century and and this video will only discuss for positive distance shortest path. Along the history, we have several well-known shortest path solver. For example, first Jigstra. Jigstra is a great scientist himself. However, there is a bottleneck on his algorithm that is on the deletion. For example, if you are planning your data, okay, you are planning your way to go and you must delete. And this is the bottleneck of the algorithm of Jigstra. And then we also have Floyd Warshall. Floyd Warshall, however, will only output the distance. They don't output the uh, step needs to be taken. So from the point A to point B, you just know, okay, I know the distance is like 10 kilometers or 20 kilometers, but you don't know which intersection to take on and which turn to make and the, the last one is the latest one is Torup I think I don't know how to pronounce it Torup and I have no idea how Torup algorithm works Shortest path algorithm is used on daily basis for example when you are driving from home to office you will open application like Wazi or here and you type your office address and let it guide you to the shortest distance to the office or perhaps if there are traffic jam it will reroute you to other shortest distance this thing is also useful for artificial intelligence system and networking system and perhaps neural biology for example if i want to know the shortest path between this point of my finger to my head maybe shortest path can help with it in order to understand my video, there are certain prerequisite knowledge that you need to have. First, you need to have intermediate or advanced understanding of algorithm. You need to need to have intermediate or advanced understanding of pseudo code or Pascal because the source code is in Pascal. But Pascal is, I think, is close enough to pseudo code. So, if you understand pseudo code, you should be understand Pascal. And you need to have knowledge of matrix and sparse matrix. Professor Insep. He lectured me back in UGM like many years ago and he got a really good lecture on sparse metric. I'll try to find his contact and put it on the description below. I was inspired by the flow of water when I developed this algorithm. For example, when I have a network of pipe here, okay, this point got branched and then it's got point again and got branched again, okay, and ultimately ends to this point. This is the source, this is the end point, okay. When I open the source, and I open this faucet here, the water is naturally will find the shortest path provided they are on the same height. Okay, it's always the shortest path. Hence, when I simulate this with my computer program, it will naturally find the shortest path. As you can see on the illustration on the screen, this is the network of pipes that I have, and if I process this in two-dimensional matrix, it is about the same as BFS. Therefore, I have to convert it to one dimensional for this thing to work in linear way or perhaps almost linear. And then I'll have the source is A and then the destination is J. The conversion works pretty simple. We have one location counter that measures the distance from point A, the source, to infinite, I think, whatever it is. Okay, And then we have point the connection of point A. Point A connects to B, C, and D with distance of 2, 3, and 4 respectively. So on one dimensional array on the 
data you can see below okay i have form point distance zero a is at distance zero and two units of distance from a will be b and c and d with three and four respectively it's pretty straightforward and then it will run okay and when it reaches b okay three from b is e so i'll just put at five is e very simple but i don't I we're not interested in them we're not interested in d because d is the, definitely the shortest okay from point d we can see we have c and h right c is two so four two no c is already at three so c will disregard c and will go with h h is three distance from d so at point seven yeah distance from a seven we'll have h and then from h will connect to j at distance of 8 unit from point a the answer is found when the location counter is larger or equal distance to the destination of the a this is the main algorithm of how it works we have the lock is zero and then we have a repeat until loop or maybe you can do do a loop in c or c like language location loc is the distance between point A to the locations so it, I say like it's the location counter and we have a double loop here I and J this is for looping the I loop is for looping the connection that current location have and J is the connection of that particular vertex after that we have target here target is the location plus the distance between the this location to the location that it points to if the distance list distance list is used to record the distance between point a to point this whatever it is point currently in the location okay if the distance list is more than target and then it will record the target point okay it will record on the target distance it will record the connection location very simple and then it will record the distance list again repeat this until the distance list the destination is less than or equal to location that means we found our destinations let's analyze the algorithm the complexity is big O D V C squared, where D is the distance from the source to the destinations, and V C actually is the average number of connections of each vertices. It means vertex one, for example, have three vertex two, have four connections, vertex five has three. The average would be three plus four plus three divided by three, three point three. Yeah. Well, this algorithm is works best when the data is sparse. For example, for the road network. The Earth is about 40,000 kilometers in circumference. Therefore, the distance from point A to point B cannot be more than 40,000. Actually, 20,000 is a good approximate, but to be safe, just multiply by two. And then we have 64 million kilometers of road on this planet and probably maybe we have one intersection every kilometers and the average number of intersections could be three i think four is possible i've seen five but i've never seen more than eight i think so three is a reasonable number i think therefore for the worst case scenario the distance will be 64 million by 3 by 3 or approximately 600 million iterations to finish the shortest path algorithm 600 million iterations is perfectly doable in a modern pc and you can actually wait 600 million iteration to finish it's not very long source code is available on the descriptions this source code is for educational purpose only you can impress your classmate you can impress your lecturer yeah it's fine you can do it for competitive programming as well but if you don't cite my source 
maybe you have some problem in the future with this because maybe your classmate or your lecturer or your competitor or your jury might find my video on YouTube so yeah you should cite where you get this source code but it's not for production because I have not extensively test this algorithm I'm pretty sure there are some weakness here and I'm pretty sure it will crash on certain situation but the source code consisted of three different programs that you must compile and execute independently first the generator this thing is used to generate input using random data I'll use max integer as infinite it means there is no connection yet between that point to the other point and then on line 9 you can change the this size to change the size of data and on line 25 we have random random x in the bracket less than y this is used to determine the probability of connection between that vertices to the other vertices and then you have warshall.dpr this is my implementation of floyd warshall algorithm this algorithm took input from input.txt and it will output on the screen just the distance between point a and j project 3 is an implementation in delphi of the algorithm that i described on this video this implementation also works on turbo pascal with minimal modification but this will work best on a 64-bit system because the addressable space of 64-bit system is a lot larger compared to 32-bit system so this program can work with more vertices and more edges on a 64-bit system and of course with longer distances I use Floyd Warshall algorithm to check the correctness of my algorithm if the waterfall algorithm can produce the same result of Floyd Warshall at 1000 by 1000 and 1200 by 1200 amount of data that means the waterfall algorithm is pretty much accurate now let the benchmark begins generating input the data size will be 1000 and we'll first call Warshall input reading time is 1.003 seconds and the output is 9 and processing time is 6.645 seconds now project 3 the input reading time is 991 milliseconds which is approximately the same input time with the Warshall but the process time is 0 okay, it's actually less than 1 milliseconds and the output is same 9 now generate for larger data set 1200 now okay calling Warshall input reading time increases to 1.408 seconds and process time will be 11 seconds 11.4 to be exact and the answer is 11 now let's call project 3 oh input reading time is approximately the same the answer is the same but the process time is just one and what is the limitation of this algorithm first it doesn't work on negative distance but I also have no intention for it to work on negative distance because I think it's too weird and this thing is inefficient when the distance is too great but not to worry because we can always change distance for example if you are measuring things in meters it will be very long or if you measure it in millimeters it will be even longer but you can simply measure it in kilometers and this distance must be an integer okay this is quite a drawback but also we can also scale it and one thing for sure, backtracking is not yet implemented, but I will make a future video. Actually, it's very simple to implement backtracking and I'll show how. But if you cannot wait while I'm implementing this backtracking, just implement it on your own. It's very simple and very easy, maybe around like three or four lines of code. Now we've reached the conclusion of this video and if this video can help you in your study, it can get you a good mark and can help you solve your assignments and impress your lecturer, please give a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe. Good luck and thank you.